Welcome back, everyone. I'm Layla. And I'm Laura. And this is For Your Penjoyment, a show about fountain pens and the joys they bring us. Brought to you by PenVT. <laughs> so how are you doing today, Laura? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, I had thought about this, hadn't I? Yes. Yes. I mostly got over my cold. Very nice. And... Even though I'm a little tired, I'm almost better. And I had an amazing Friday. Tell me about it. I went dancing again. I'm so proud of you. I went to see my favorite local band at my little cafe that I go to sometimes that's near my house. Right. And I brought our coworker, Lauren. Oh, my goodness. Yes. It was so fun. And oh. she loved it. She loved my band. Oh, that's so cool. She, we, we just, like, we had an amazing time together. And it was so cool, like, just... Feeling comfortable with her doing yeah. something outside of work. It was such a good bonding yeah, experience. Yeah, it was just amazing. Very we had so cool. much fun. We danced together on the last two songs. I'm not a big dancer. You know, she kept like encouraging me, and I was like, oh, there aren't enough people up there. But I did it at the very end. I'm incredibly proud of you. It was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. What about you? Uh, let's see. I am doing well. I um, hmm. I had to think about that for a second. Uh -huh, you're not prepared this time. I know. I mean, I didn't go ah at the beginning of it, but well. <laughs> um, I'm allowed to not be prepared sometimes. That's true. But no, um, things are good today. We're celebrating a few things. We are celebrating the solar eclipse. Yes. The total eclipse of the sun of That's the heart, right. whatever. I've been singing Total Eclipse of the Heart on the low all day. I, I did not fly a Learjet up to Nova Scotia to see it, though. But we did go outside. We did go outside. Did. It was pretty cool. Uh -huh. uh, today, if you're a fan of Empire Records, the movie, it's also Rex Manning Day. I have no idea what that is. That's <laughs> fine. It's very niche. Okay. It's a movie from the 90s. All the late 80s, early 90s kids might remember it. Okay. Um... Say no more, mo no more. That's the lyric from uh, one his popular song in the movie. So happy Rex Manning Day, everyone. Okay, happy <laughs> Rex Manning Day, whatever that is. What pen are you using today? Aha, uh -huh. I am using not a pen you can buy here, right. unfortunately. But it's mm -hmm. a very cool pen. I got it at the Baltimore Pen Show. Oh, nice. From good old Kirk Spear. Right. Pen Realm. Pen Realm. Yeah. And... I really like it because it's really different mm -hmm. and colorful and weird. It's a Pelican Pen Collection P21. It's a vintage pen, and I figured out exactly what year it's from, from 1992 to 93. Wow. And this is like a student pen that was designed for, like, teenagers, like high school kids. And right. they come out of a whole bunch of different weird designs, and this one this really one appealed to, to me. Yeah. And I love that I don't know what the heck is supposed to be on it. It just it's weird and cool and I love the colors. And I got really lucky when I picked this one out because it's one of the few time periods of the series that they had gold plated steel nibs instead of just steel. Oh and I like how it writes. That's pretty neat. It's sort of almost got a little bit of a stub going. Like it's a little bit, you know, yeah. Different line variation. At first I thought it was a little scratchy, but then I realized no. Huh. So it's fun. I like it a lot. Yeah, I'm you let me borrow the pen. Yeah. There is some line variation when you go side it's to side and up and down. Yeah. I was impressed. It's and a good I, writer. I put in Caveco Royal Blue, a cartridge, which I don't normally use oh cartridge. I had one sitting around because it came with my iridescent pearl. Sure. And it's really, really compatible with this pen, so I actually bought a package of them. I'm impressed there, and so. surprised. I know. You <laughs> never know what I'm going to do. <laughs> You're so unpredictable. What my little using? wild card. <laughs> What are you using? I actually forgot it in the pocket of my jacket. Oh, of course. Of course I did. I what took the jacket off. No, you off had it when we went out to see the eclipse, I though. sure did. Uh, I'm using the Kaveco Sport, the iridescent special edition. Uh -huh. I have it in a double broad. I have it inked with uh, Spearmint Diva from Diamine. Good old Spearmint Diva. I thought the color was a good match for the iridescence, and I love a good shimmer sometimes. Mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, it's making my writing experience incredibly fun. Very nice. You're not using the cartridge that came with it. No. You could donate it to me. I can definitely (laughs) donate it to you. But um, it it was my first time using the tiny little uh, mini converter. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I've only used cartridges in that pen before. I was surprised by how much ink the mini converter holds yeah I it feels really easily. i didn't use one at first and then i finally got one yeah. and i really like it yeah it holds about the same amount as the cartridge right. but it's really easy to fill a lot better than some converters fill. yeah exactly. it, it works really well i, I like was surprised it. yeah yeah so that's been my discovery Very of cool. the day. that's yeah. a great discovery i like it mm-hmm. so we've got some fun stuff happening in the pen boutique world yeah Uh, The owner, Lena, she is actually um, donating some prizes to the art and poster contest at the Nepal Education and Cultural Center. yeah, yeah, yeah. April 14th. Cool. There are two categories, um, ages 5 through 9 and 10 through 18. Nice. Uh, There'll be 50 participants. Wow. Everyone's going to get a goodie bag from Pen Boutique. Nice. Uh, They have some Lamy gifts in there, some Pelican, Pelican. Uh-huh. some Faber Castell. Uh, and she's also donating eight grand prizes to the uh, art contest as well. Very, very cool. I love Lena's philanthropic endeavors. Yeah, and she's especially into like encouraging young people to write. That's really important Absolutely. to her. Absolutely. I really like that. Like we were talking about that the other day, yeah. how we especially love it. When well, I mean, it doesn't have to be a young person, but any new person, it's so wonderful to inc- like introduce them yeah. to their first fountain pen. Be but part of their pen gateway. I like seeing you interact with young people. I You're, get so you really, excited. You really do. I maybe like unreasonably excited at times. Yeah, but it's I'm really like, cute. let's do this. <laughs> let's find you the perfect pen. Yeah, and you really connect with them sometimes. Yeah. I'm not that great with younger people i'm always a little bit nervous around them or something but yeah i mean but i love it that absolutely i love watching them get into it and it's just yeah. it's so exciting mm-hmm. yeah you know i like asking the right questions what do you plan on using mm-hmm. this for why do you mm-hmm. want to use a fountain yes. pen and i meet them where they're at um i'm pretty intuitive i can pick you up are. on signals and intuitive. cues yeah um so i've helped a range of young folks uh-huh. get into their first pen yeah and it's lovely it's the it not the one thing that makes me happy it makes me most happy about working at pen boutique yeah yeah wow it's pretty exciting that's that's pretty high up yeah. there i mean it's on the top but i mean that's impressive that you're calling it the most because there are a lot of things that bring us joy but wow it was kind of like cool. um when i was an optician yeah. My favorite thing in the world was putting a child in their first pair of glasses. Really? And watching them look at their parents and focus for the first time. That is pretty special. It was moving. Wow. So yeah. it's sim- it's akin it is to that. It's similar, yeah. Yeah. The first time, the first new experience. And thinking about, like, where's this going to take them? They've yeah. got a lifetime ahead of them exactly. to explore this. And, and what good are they going to put into the world with it? Right. What new art? What short stories? What assignments? Yeah. How are they going to grow? I oh, love yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. So speaking of exciting things, we got new stuff in store. Oh, of course. We got always do. a ton of stuff to go through today. Uh-huh. We actually have a rare release from Cross yes. to start out with. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost, we have two of the three colors of the Century 2 ballpoint. We have pink with white cherry blossom petals. That's pretty. And we also have blue with pink cherry blossom petals. Wow. And it has rose gold detail on that one, which I really do appreciate. The only one we're missing is the white pen with the pink blossoms. Oh. But that is due to come in hopefully soon. Is that a matte finish one too? It should be a matte finish, much like the pink. Interesting. This is a really interesting shade of blue. It's almost got a little bit of purpliness to Mm -hmm. it. And the cherry blossoms are pretty, sort of, almost corally. Not quite, but, yeah. It's very pretty. I like that. And with the rose gold trim, mm-hmm. it's really pretty. Very yeah. cool. Those are nice. But, I mean, I was pleasantly surprised by that this. That would stuff. make a really great Mother's Day gift. I think so. 
Yeah. I agree completely. We also have um, two Year of the Dragon releases from Ooh. Cross as well. Very cool. So we have two pens. We have the Bailey, which is their heavier pen. It's a white enamel pen with a gold dragon on it, rose gold details. We have it in ballpoint, rollerball, and fountain pen. Huh. Um, I like the matte finish. That's really nice. I do, too. This is surprisingly weighty, yes. too. Yes. It has a good hand feel, yeah. too. Yeah. Wow. Nice That's twist nice. mechanism. It yeah. Is. And the dragon graphic on it is cool. It's not, like, cartoony, cartoony. or anything. Right. It's just, like, cool looking. Exactly. Yeah. I like the thin lines and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Very and nice. then if you don't like a hefty pen, we have the Amber Bailey Light as an option. To me, the color is a little more carnelian than amber. Yes. But it's got an amber dragon on it as well and gold details. We also have that in ballpoint, rollerball, and fountain pen. So, yeah, they're the exact same size. One's but, just heavier. But one's just heavier. Mm -hmm. Now I understand what it means. The Bailey, the Bailey versus Light. the Bailey It literally Light. means it's lighter weight. Exactly. Huh. That's really cool. Yeah. I can't I'm... believe I didn't know that until now. <laughs> it makes total sense. I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Okay, nice. Next up, we've got the long-awaited release from yes. Lamy, yes. the new special edition All-Stars. Uh -huh. We have them in two colors. The reddish pink mm -hmm. is called Fiery. And it has a translucent red grip section. Whoa, okay. That's pretty cool. Very uh, contrasty there. Exactly. It almost looks like it's on fire because it's so <laughs> bright when you pull that Agreed. cap off. Yeah. And we have this icy blue huh. uh, all-star with the translucent blue grip section. Whoa. And that's called aquatic. That's very intense, too. I agree. Huh. And it does look aquatic. It certainly does. And huh. we have them in fountain, rollerball, ballpoint, and mechanical pencil. And these have black trim, which is yes. interesting. I like the black trim. They have the black clip as well as the dark nib. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it's fantastic. Huh. You know, the colors surprised me. Yeah, me I, too. You know, last year's petrol and dark lilac. very different from last year's. Very different. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised by these. Very cool. Last on my list is oh. a release from... Novelur, Narwhal. Uh -huh. We have their original plus pens in Lavina Graphite. Wow. And Matera Quartz. I'm wowing because they're extremely sparkly. They certainly are. Oh, my gosh. As soon as I saw the Graphite pen, I got it. The, <laughs> the sparkles, the darkness, like... Yeah. It just spoke to me. That's very And nice. they have rose gold components. So the metal components match the nib, which I, I love it when companies pay that much attention to detail. I love how the sparklers, sparkles aren't just like white yes. or silver. They When you move it in your hand, they change mm -hmm. color. It's like a rainbow of sparkles. It's beautiful. You know, I see greens and teals and blues and purples and red literally like every color of the rainbow exactly and when you move it it's just like constantly changing very, i would love to cool. see them in the sun just watch oh them yeah oh my gosh yeah and i'm definitely gearing up for that material quartz i love a good demonstrator Amazing. narwhals narwhal makes great demonstrators uh the nib sizes i do believe are fine through double broad including stub as well um very nice. i just i love this pen I'm surprised you. Well, I guess the the black one suits you. The black one but suits me. I could see me. you owning either one. I could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're sparkly. I love them. You know. All right. Yeah. So you've got some new releases to go yes. over as well. This morning I was able to swatch these really cool new inks Ooh, that we have. I it's love a it new brand nice. for us again. Excellent. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Endless Alchemy ink, Ooh. which I wasn't sure where it came from, so I looked it up online, and it's made in India. That's pretty that neat. That is very cool. I love that. As I was saying. That's so right. they come in these boxes that you're probably not going to be able to see this now. But when I was doing a little Instagram video about these and I panned the camera over the boxes, it was so cool. It was like this iridescent rainbow effect, like almost holographic. The Something about the packaging. Cool. Really cool. Yeah. And then this is really creative. Mm -hmm. They come... 
with a little cork thing. Very nice. And the bottle itself is like an alchemist's flask. Right. And you can put it on here. I hope this doesn't go. Okay, so it like goes around. I'm afraid to do it up in the air, but it can like spin around and feel really unstable if you feel like feeling scared right. or you can flip it over and it has a little indentation so it can sit I love that still and the bottles are hand blown glass yes correct? they're hand blown so each one the shape's a little bit different some are a little more crazy Wonky. than others yeah. yeah it's really cool that's and really neat detail so the four colors that we have which is all the colors they come in mm-hmm. so far are oh and they come with these little things that tell about each color and you can do your own little swatch they have beautiful which little swatch fun. cards yes so let me chuck those at you thank you and then i'll show you the colors we've got candy c ah. which has really pretty sheen mm-hmm. sort of a purplish reddish sheen i do love the blue, blue ink with like that purpley red mm-hmm. sheen to it it's gorgeous then we have Wizard's Pencil, which when I was swatching this, it looked green when I first put it down. But then as it dried, it got sort of a sleet color mm-hmm. with a tinge of green. Yeah, I can see that. It's a really it's nice It's definitely color. that, you know, graphite pencil color for sure. And it reminds me of, like, a um, slate that you'd use in a slate patio or mm-hmm. flooring or something like yeah. that. How it's got that variation in color and the tinge. Sure. And then we have a red, but it's not like a bright red that will t- not an aggressive fear us. red, right? Fear us. It's a new term. I <laughs> this is called drops of Mars. So I it's like, like that. a Martian, bleh, a Martian <laughs> red. It's oh. very pretty. Yeah, very pretty. Kind of brickish. Yes, looking or definitely something. brickish. And then the last one is Mystic Forest. Ooh, that's a, a nice really green. nice green. Mm-hmm, it is. It's I not. Like a, that. It's not like too bright or too dark it's i don't know kind of restful mysterious natural looking i'm into that i like it yeah. but yeah these are very nice and what impressed me the bo- the most was when i did the swatches i used the pilot dip pen yeah and they wrote really, really smooth. You told me that. They Sometimes really I have well. trouble with dip pens, like they'll drip or splotch or ink will feel too thin or too thick. Mm-hmm. felt perfect. I was really happy with how my swatches yeah, turned out. Yeah, swatches turned out beautiful. Yeah, so I'm excited to try these in a real pen. I love it. They're nice. Then I have something very, very exciting. Something huge. A lot of people have been looking forward to this very much, mm-hmm. especially us. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have the new Mont Blanc, the Origin Meisterstück series, which is a tribute to Mont Blanc's centennial legacy. I love so that. it's in a 1920s kind of style, mm-hmm. which I really like. I'm oh, into yeah. that era. And they've got a lot of vintagey looking details mm-hmm. on them. Like the shapes of the clip are completely different mm-hmm. from the regular Very retro. Style. They're retro-looking curvy clips. Mm-hmm. Um, on the sides of the pens, they've got this thing here, which you can read for me. The Mont Blanc Meisterstuck. It has a little mountain and an H810. And on the metal detail around the cap, it says 1924. 2024. Very nice. Mm-hmm. And this is retro to have, like, the words written on the side of yep. the pen like that. Mm-hmm. So I've got that. And then they come in three different styles. Right. We've got the precious resin mm-hmm. ones, which come in either vintage blue or vintage green. Beautiful. And, and the, the blue has the yes, platinum details. Right. And the green has the, the gold details. Mm-hmm. And these have really cool sort of opalescent swirliness mm. to the resin. It's not just a solid color yeah. like a regular Meister Stoke, which I really like. And it's pretty noticeable. I, see I mean, the it's color like variation. more noticeable than some of those sailor pens that have a little bit of that. I like like the the lime one has it subtly, but this this is you can see it pretty it's easily. Really and it's pretty. really nice. And it's both in the blue and the green. It's like that. Oh, yeah. And these come in fountain pen, ballpoint, and rollerball. Mm-hmm. And then the Douay series has this oh. really cool design I on the metal that. part. So Douay means half and half. Mm-hmm. It's half precious resin, half metal. Right. 
and then the um, solitaire, which means it's all one uh. thing, only comes in coral. But what a color. That's fabulous. It's so pretty. The coral with the gold really detail. I really like this oh. coral color. Yes. Gorgeous. The, the duet comes in the green and the blue. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. These there's something are really special about really, that. Really, really exciting. And there's going to be matching inks soon. And notebooks, right? And notebook. Mm-hmm. And the, the three colors. All yeah. three colors are going to come. Green, oh. blue, and coral, and inks. That's going to be a fun so, addition yeah. to their inks. You don't want to buy a Mont Blanc or you can't afford a Mont Blanc, you can still get the ink. Absolutely. And these are going to be really cool 100%. Inks. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Yeah, series. a lot of people have been excited about this. Yeah, series. I mean, we sold out in some of them already, mm-hmm. right, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, so. the, uh, the 149 especially. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, yeah. Very cool. Amazing. Yeah. Well, since it's our show and we do whatever we want, we're bumping up the silly segment. Since April is National Poetry Month, we decided to uh, give our own take, our own attempt at poetry <laughs> about some of our favorite pens. Um, Laura, yes. would you mind reading first? Okay. All right. I'll give it a shot. Okay. Now remember, this is intentionally kind of bad because it's supposed to be funny. So some of my rhymes are a bit of a stretch. I understand. <laughs> I tried my best to be horrible. So let's okay. do this. All right. And I have some props here. Oh, very nice. I will hand you the props as I go. I am ready. All right. My poem is called, Which to Choose? Mm. A pen poem. And this is about a person who may or may not be me. Mm. It's me. (laughs) I didn't say that. Okay, ready? Ready. Here we go. Once a lonely pen lover set out to decide which Japanese pen she should keep by her side. Mm. To laugh with, to cry with, to frown at and smile at. Should it be sailor or should it be pilot? Her 1911 at first caught her eye, a bright tangerine orange like a day in July. Love that. Just seeing it there in her hand made her joyful. But would choosing a sailor pen be disloyal? Pilot had been with her through thick and thin with her metro, Mm -hmm. her prera. Oh my goodness. Her Stella (laughs) and Falcon. Wow. Sure, pilot pens' names have too many numbers. (laughs) But custom 743 dreams filled her slumbers. The F.A. nib with its flax felt so frisky, like she downed about three or four glasses of whiskey. (laughs) It was so inspiring, so exciting and fun, like staring straight into an eclipse of the sun. (laughs) But what about that wonderful sense of control when the 1911 reached into her soul and channeled that reserved and deliberate side? When her focus, precision, and cool brought her pride. Did she want to relax and be spontaneous? Was there something inside her, subcutaneous, (laughs) waiting to let loose and be expressive? Or was that line variation a little excessive? Maybe the sailor was a better reflection of her cheerful demeanor, but quiet introspection. Hmm. She kept vacillating like a wave's calm and swell again, and finally decided to just go with a pelican. (laughs) (laughs) Laura, that was beautiful. Uh, I like your plot twist at the end. Thank you. Was not expecting that. Thank you very much. Oh, oh. My heart's pounding. <laughs> I think you did great. That was a wonderful poem. Yikes. <laughs> All right. You ready for mine? I think so. I can recover from mine. I think you can. Okay. I'm, I believe in you. <sighs> <clears throat> yes. A pen poem. That's what mine was called. A. Great minds think alike. (laughs) Okay. In a land of ink, where words take flight, there dwells a pen, a wondrous sight. Okay. Its nib, a gleaming silver spear. The Schaefer 300! Oh, so dear. What? 
With every stroke, it dances. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you never even used a C for 300. For some reason, I was oddly inspired. Really? Totally. By a sh sh for three. What's it called? Shay for three million? Yep. You, you and your numbers, of course. I'm a little skeptical, Layla. You wanted a poem. Keep going. Uh, with every stroke, it dances bold. On parchment white, it's sto <laughs> story. <laughs> story. <Hey! laughs> Hmm. Layla, no. That I made a is good not at poem. your favorite pen. No, Come it's on. certainly not. But I have a backup poem. Really? I oh, do. Okay, okay. Plot twist here as Plot well. Plot twist here. All right. Now, this is a pen I aspire to own. Oh, okay. Um, kind of like this one. Exactly. Yeah. The Vanishing Point. Ooh, oh, I like this. Okay. And I may have. A prop as well. All right. This is my favorite color of the vanishing Ooh, point. Is that the coral? That's the coral red. Very nice. I love it. All right. In a world of pens, there's quite a sight. A pen that disappears with all its might. Not into thin air. Oh, no, not that. But with a click, it goes uh, just like that. I rhymed that with that. Cut me some slack. I think it should be it goes kerplant. <laughs> No. I wanted to go for plaid. Okay, okay. Sorry, I to <laughs> The pilot vanishing point. It's no joke. One moment it's there, the next, poof, up in smoke. Ooh. You're writing away, lost in your thought. Then click goes the pen and suddenly caught. You search and you hunt. Where could it be? Did it vanish to Narnia or the deep blue sea? Maybe. But fear not, dear friend. It's just in your hand. With a click, it's back ready to expand. Ooh. Its retractable nib is a marvel to see. No caps to lose. No fuss. Just glee. Ooh, yes. But oh, the mystery of its magic trick. The pilot vanishing point. Quite the pick. Quite sick, as Lauren would say. <laughs> sick. So if you're in need of a pen that's slick... Mm -hmm. With a bit of whimsy and a lot of click, look no further. This pen's the joint, the ever elusive pilot vanishing point. I love it. <laughs> Very nice. I really want this. This pen is aspirational it for looks me. Looks pretty good in your hand. It doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I need it. Oh, don't. Uh, uh, it's pretty okay. tempting. It's so tempting. Okay, let's give it to Penelope. Let's give it to Penelope. All right. Will she fit? Ooh. What? Not that end. There we go. Of course. Penelope well, can hold Don any Penelope. pen. Almost. <laughs> not not, not an Amiki Emperor. Not some of your Benus. <laughs> no, not some of my Benus. <laughs> well, Laura, that was quite the lyrical journey we went on. It's going to take me the rest of the show to recover from performing at home. <laughs> I sure hope not. Uh, but speaking of journeys... Yes. I want to talk about our personal pen journeys here. Yes. I think it'd be beneficial for newcomers and old pen heads alike to hear about it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, when I got my first fountain pen, I didn't set out to become a collector of them. No, I didn't either. Yeah. I thought it would be my one and only pen. That's what I thought as well. <laughs> but with a little research and falling down the right rabbit holes... Mm -hmm. It expanded my whole view of this pen collecting thing. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I my first pen was the Lamy Safari. Right. Um, and once I discovered that it came in array, came in an array of colors. Yeah. I hit the ground running. Uh huh. I needed to have every color that spoke to me. Right. We were talking about this yesterday, mm -hmm. and we wanted to kind of discuss like because we have talked about like how we started our collections and sure. stuff like that but what we were we really started getting interested in when we started discussing this mm -hmm. is like how is your pen collection an expression of you mm -hmm. and it how they're unique to each person yes and how did you kind of discover as you went along mm -hmm what you wanted your pen collection to be and right. kind of maybe started out with one thing, but it mm -hmm. developed and blossomed into something else yeah. as you became more familiar with the pen world and maybe you changed a little bit right. or discovered new things about yourself or 
That type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. really interesting. It's been a wild ride. Yeah. Like when I before I came to Pen Boutique, which further expanded my uh, collection of fountain pens. Right. And my view of fountain pens, there were brands that I didn't Me know too. about that I was introduced Very much to. So yeah. Nibs, etc. Yeah. I hit the ground running there as well. Sure. Um, but before coming to Pen Boutique, I considered myself the queen of entry level fountain pens. Right. It was the Safari. It was the Metropolitan. Um, I got a Pelican Twist, which was delightful. Mm -hmm. A Diplomat Magnum. Um, a Faber Castell Grip. I wanted to know all these entry pens and what they felt like. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that definitely helped me carve my way into like developing a feel for what I enjoyed. And that's part of why you're so good at connecting with the young people that are buying their first pen. You have a lot of experience with that type of mm -hmm. pen. And that type of pen is so fun because you can get a lot of different ones in different colors. Mm -hmm. And exactly, you love exploring different colors. I do. Colors speak to me in ways that inspire me. And I want to have them all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, you were a little more deliberate in your pen collection to start out. I guess so. Mm. I mean, so I had a, a Metropolitan as my first pen, mm -hmm. and I picked it. I mean, I researched a bunch and decided this is a good entry-level pen, and it's the one of the choices that are common entry-level pens sure. that most appeals to my sense of aesthetics. Mm -hmm. At first, I thought the Safari was a little weird looking. So I didn't, now I like it, but at first, I was like, hmm, this is bizarre. I don't like this strange cliff. And hey, it's the grip section for me. I wanted a very classic looking pen because I like classic things. Mm -hmm. I'm more conservative in my style. Mm -hmm. But I also, it's very important to me to be different. Mm -hmm. Just being in the fountain pen hobby is something that probably the majority of the people in the fountain pen hobby are people that like to be different. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, how many people out of everyone in the world uses fountain pens? It's a, it's a pretty small. Right. And you choose to do this as a way to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And you make your selections of your pens as a way to express yourself in the same way that you choose your clothes or your car or your furnishings Accessories, or whatever. Yeah. If I remember correctly, you did a lot of research. Yeah. You went from the Metropolitan to what pen next? Was it, Did you go into the Gold Nib next? Yes, my next pen was a Pilot Falcon mm -hmm. because I wanted to experience what a semi-flex pen felt like. Because I had a pen pal who used red, used vintage pens, right. and I really liked that look, and I wanted that line variation, which is why I'm fascinated by the Custom 743 with the Falcon Nib. Yes. So, yeah, I wanted to explore that, and that went with my enjoyment of things that are more vintage-y, mm -hmm. like like I said earlier, I really liked the 1920s era, and I really got obsessed with the era for a while. And So, yeah, a lot of my pens are very classic-looking mm -hmm. and very elegant. They're not, like, out there and, you know, unusual shapes and stuff like that. I like the more streamlined kind of shapes yeah. and just, yeah... But I do also really appreciate bright colors. Mm -hmm. I love bright colors. They bring me a lot of joy. Yeah. So most of my early pens were just black because that's, I don't know, more, I don't know. Like a lot of the pens that I liked only came in black mm -hmm. for one thing. Mm -hmm. And then I did get some pens that are really bright colors, but... The ones that I chose are usually solid colors. Right. I don't like the swirly kind of chaotic colors that you do. Mm -hmm. We just have different tastes there, right. which kind of reflects our personality. This and I think true. that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I like things to be a little more orderly. Right. And things that are like repeating patterns, that type of thing, really appeals to me. Mm. So the pens that I have that are patterned, 
are more like stripey type things or wavy patterns. Here, like I brought some examples to show you mm -hmm. the type of pens that are in my collection that kind of reflects my style, I feel. Yeah. So I, when it, the, the first um, pelican that I ever got was this um, white tortoise one yeah. with the, the stripes on it. Mm -hmm. And then the first expensive pen that I couldn't resist buying when I was working at Pen Boutique was this Monte Grappa, Ooh. which is stripey, yeah. and it has sort of a purplish blue and an orange, which I love both of those colors. I really like that pen. I can see how this would speak to you. I actually saw this pen for the first time not very long after I started working here at Pen Boutique. Mm -hmm. Carrie from Kenro came and did an event with us, and he brought one with him. And the one he brought with him was more stripey. Like, the oh. colors were more extreme than this. Right. And I just, like, couldn't forget about that pen. And I bought this pen much, much later, like, over a year oh. after I first saw that pen. But I couldn't stop thinking about it. It just really appealed to mm -hmm. me. So I'm, like, the, kind of the opposite of you, where you often buy things when you just see them and you can't resist them and more impulsively, a lot of times I'll see one and I'll, uh, you definitely I'll really it let it simmer there yeah. before I actually buy it. I hear you. Another one that I really like, I don't own this pen, but mm -hmm. I really like this pen. I own another auto hoot in the same design four. Mine's mm -hmm. a different design that we don't carry, but I really like this one that we do carry. It's this rose gold wave one and I love the repeating wave design on it. You know why I like this pen and why this pen reminds me of you? Why? Because the waves remind me of your curls and like tonally mm -hmm. it's similar to your hair color. Oh, you're right. It makes yeah. me happy. Me it too. makes me think of yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that it's it's got this kind of soothing wave thing mm -hmm. but it's not just like a boring wave. It's got like depth to it and a little bit of chaotic or organicness to it. It's mm -hmm. not just consistent. Right, like, right. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm I not do. expressing it well, but yeah, it's really intriguing and it's a cool design. I like that. Another pen that uh -huh. really, I think, reflects style that I cho would choose I is my so. Hexo. That's right. Like, this kind of looks like a car I would buy it's or sleek. a piece of electronics I would buy or mm -hmm. something like that. It's got the rose, what do you call this color? Kind of a rose gold -ish Kind of in that rose gold family. Look like the way they do in a, an electronic, piece mm -hmm. of electronic, like an iPhone or something or, yeah. like that. I think I did have, like, an iPod back in the day. Yeah, I did, too. Color. I had the rose gold mm -hmm. iPod, and it was kind of like this yeah. color. And it's got a little some angles that appeal to me. Mm -hmm. I really like those facets. Yeah. So this is another one, which I don't use my preppies that much, but I do have a few preppies, and I really like this black one with yeah. this repeating design on it. You like a good repeating design, a good like geometric. Yes, type of... I do. Yeah. This just very vintagey and classic looking. Mm -hmm. My E ninety five. Very good. Love, as we've said before, mm -hmm. I love all the different versions of the right. 95 s but I brought this one as an example. Eventually, I did get to really like the Safari, mm -hmm. or the All-Star, actually. Yeah. I like the All-Star better than... But this color super appeals to me because mm -hmm. I love this shade of purple, and right. I love sort of mauve purples. Really brings me happiness. Yeah. And I started to enjoy the shape after a while. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. And then another one, which is kind of interesting, is the, the Diplomat Elox Matrix. Mm -hmm. It's got this cool repeating green design yeah. on it. Like some cross hatching going yeah. on. I like that a lot. And to me, like looking at this pen as it relates to your collection, like, you have an air of sophistication about you. Yeah. And you also have your unique, like, quirkiness, too. Yes. As well. So, like, looking at all this, it's very representative of you. Yeah. That's yeah. why I chose these. It, I mean, it's a good spread. And I think it's a good example of my entire collection. That's right. 
Yeah, and I should have shown this one again because <laughs> it's bright. <laughs> the royal tangerine. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And you have a brightness to you. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. So, yeah, when we were talking about this, one of the words that came to mind when we were talking about stuff that appeals to me is elegance. Right. And, yeah, that's true. I do like things that are elegant. Mm -hmm. And I, I was telling you yesterday, I had this weird experience one time. I don't know, it was maybe like five or so years ago. I don't know, maybe a little bit more than that. I was having dinner all by myself in a restaurant, which I enjoy doing. And I was just, you know, eating the way I normally do, which has sort of a precision and like a slow enjoyment mm -hmm. of what I'm eating and focusing on it and everything. And the waitress came over to me and she said, she seemed kind of embarrassed and said, I just had to tell you that you are so elegant. Like, you're one of the most elegant people I've ever seen. And I was like, what? Wow, thank you. I was really, really liked that compliment. Yeah. It really appealed to me and pleased me that she found me elegant. Mm -hmm. And I told her, yeah, actually, as I get older, I am trying to develop an elegance. So mm -hmm. the fact that you actually found me elegant. I was like, wow, the ultimate compliment. That's beautiful. So, yeah, I think the pens that appeal to me have a certain elegance mm -hmm. to them. But what about you? You like ones that are sparkly and bring you joy in that way and express... You would describe them as a little more on the chaotic side. Yeah. Um, I, again, love color. I love how it speaks to me. Yeah, sure. Swirly pens combine a lot of colors, and they're very much in my wheelhouse. Why do you like swirly? Try to explain to me. All right. This might sound a little odd. It's okay. I love um, odd. <laughs> <laughs> how do I say this? How do I verbally interpret how a swirly pen makes me feel? There's a passion to them. Just oh. the way those colors come together. Yeah, I can see that. It's kind of moving in a way. Okay. And that speaks to the kind of writing that I would like to accomplish. Uh-huh. You know, when I'm using my pens. Like, I gravitate towards different pens on any given day. That's why I have so many inked, because they're so different. Mm hmm And they evoke different feelings within me and I want to capitalize on the feelings they evoke and commit them to paper. Mm -hmm. So one day it could be our store exclusive with Leonardo or Rangoli. Right. And then the next day it could be a Benu Euphoria, which is all glitter, all sparkle, beautiful pen. Um, it, it's all based on my emotions, my mood yeah, and yeah, what I yeah. want to put out into the world. Right. And you have a much more emotional personality than mm -hmm. I do. I'm more of a cool and calm person mm -hmm. most of the time. And that really explains the type of pens that appeal to me mm -hmm. versus the type of pens that appeal to you. 100%. And why I don't understand the appeal of the, <laughs> the swirly <laughs> pen. But when you explained it like that, I totally understand why it suits you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's really fascinating. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and your collection is what you make it. It's like an extension of yourself, and you could take it as far as you want to take it. Right. Like, to some people, prestige is important. So having sure. certain brands yeah. is essential for their collection. Right, you want to, you know, people see that pen in your mm -hmm. pocket. They see maybe the Mont Blanc logo. And that communicates a certain message. Absolutely, and it gives you a, a confidence and exactly. showing who you want to Present to the into world. the world. Right. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong no, with that. No, of course not. You know, like, my aspirational pens might not be a Mont Blanc, but they could be a Visconti of the same price point mm -hmm. because of those swirls, because of the feelings sure. they evoke. Like, it all Or that boils. Platinum Raiden Galaxy. Oh, I love that <laughs> pen. If I had several thousand dollars lying around, that pen would uh -huh. be mine. 
in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. But I find it just super fascinating what we're talking about here, like how different people have very different personalities mm-hmm. in their pens that they choose yeah. can communicate that mm-hmm. and help them express that. Mm-hmm. And that's what I try to bring out in the young people finding their first yeah, pen. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I want you to find your voice with this pen. Mm-hmm. I want to ask all the right questions so you can start cultivating that collection that speaks to you, mm-hmm. that is an extension of you, that says to the world, here I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah, when I was writing that poem, even though it started out intending to be a silly poem, it was actually really thought-provoking for me because I realized I do have kind of these two parts to myself. Oh, definitely. That are, you know, one where I like to be really expressive sometimes, especially when I'm writing. Mm Mm-hmm. But I also have this very calm and cool and precise and deliberate mm-hmm. side too. Yeah. And I don't know. Is it the, and then the you also indulge your it? silly side. <laughs> yes. By like exactly. coloring in pictures at church. <laughs> I. That makes me so happy. It's so it makes cute. Me happy too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we all have a lot of complex parts to our personality. Definitely. And, it's really interesting, like, some people will know maybe only one side of you. Mm-hmm. It, you know, you present a certain side when you're at work or right. with your, when you're with different people or sure. whatever. And your pen collection can kind of represent the entire you if mm-hmm. you really want it to. There is a pen for every facet of the individual. Right. I mm-hmm. was just thinking about this one customer who's an author, and he came in to buy a pen to sign books at a book signing, and he told me he wanted a purple pen because he really likes purple, but that he wouldn't use that pen in a lot of circumstances because he wanted to seem professional, Mm. so he picks a much more conservative pen Mm. most of the time, but when he's doing these book signings, he wants to show off the purple ink and the purple book cover, so he picks this to express this part of I love himself. That. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah, that's the choices cool. we make. It yeah. Is. I, I just find it fascinating. Definitely. Yeah. Last but certainly not least, we've got the mailbag. <laughs> the mailbag. We put out an all call for you folks to write us letters and boy did you respond. We got three. Yes. I was impressed. Yes, indeed. So let's By read the them. Way. Pilot mailbag, of course. Hi, Bill. (laughs) How's it going? (laughs) Let's read them in order that we received them. Yes, good idea. First, um, our first letter came from the gentleman who named Penelope. Yes. There we go. Very good. For your pen enjoyment. And he wrote us a letter in different styles of calligraphy, which I found beautiful. Yes, they're gorgeous. I'll take a photo after we finish filming. Dear Laura and Layla, thank you for all that you share on For Your Penjoyment. The pens, the ink, the paper, and most of all, yourselves. Aww. Best wishes, David. Thank you, David. And he also made a note of the pens and inks that he used I love that. to write this letter with. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to say them all. I'm not going to rattle them off. I'll just let the picture speak for itself. Okay, okay. Just so you can equate. Whatever that one is, the sheen is gorgeous. The Lammy Dark Lilac. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Very, very cool. And then we got a postcard. Oh, yes. From friend of the show, and <laughs> we can call him Show Poet Laureate yeah, for the time being. <laughs> Our friend Eric. I love this postcard. It makes really me so happy. It appeals to my love of the ocean. It's yes. so cool. It's got us. Squid and a jellyfish and like some kind of wacky sea cucumber or something, <laughs> a sea star. I have a translation here. Yes, his handwriting was a little hard to read, so he came into the store and he I helped asked us him out. to tell me. <laughs> Didn't want to mess with us. Now he used the Sailor, Sailor Hokoro dip pen with cool. the Fude nib, yeah. and he used Andorillium Colossal Squid Dark, which Perfect. is one of our favorite inks. It is. He wrote us a little haiku. Wonderful, For Layla. That's right. Layla and Laura, a springtime giggle created, help to renew. 
Oh, I love that. Very spring like the renewal. The renewal, exactly. Very nice. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> and then lastly, you have a story about the last oh, one. Oh, yeah. So this is amazing. So our friend Bill from Pilot was at the Atlanta Pen Show this mm-hmm. past weekend, and he texted me from the show and told me that this woman came up to him at the pilot table and was like, I recognize you from the Pen Boutique's YouTube show. <laughs> because I like, interviewed him on our show. Yeah. And he was like, what? <laughs> yes, you're right. You Bill, have. you're famous. <laughs> And it turned out that she is actually a huge fan of Pen Boutique. She lives in Atlanta. She's never been to our store, but she loves my blog. She loves our show. She said she bought like 95% of her pens, inks, and stationery from Pen Boutique right. because she really loves our our customer service. Mm-hmm. And we talked to Amber earlier today, and she recognized her name and was like, oh, yeah, I know her. Yeah. So, yeah. And about a half hour after Laura relayed the story to me, both Aurora and Amber came into our little studio with a letter. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Just in time to be on the show. It was serendipitous. So this was a letter, which she sent before going to the show. And That's right. Bill from Pam Prince. And it's a little origami heart. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. I love this. And it says, To the Pen Boutique staff, you patiently sell us, your customers, not just pens and inks, but the tools to make the world a better place. One sentence at a time. Many thanks and warm hugs. Pam Prince, a customer from Atlanta. And she used a Lamy Safari Medium um, Edelstein Star Ruby. <laughs> that makes me so happy. Thank you so much, Thank Pam. you so much, Pam. That was delightful. I hope Thank we you. get to meet her someday. If you're ever in Maryland, yes. please stop by the store. Or we would the love DC to meet you. Pen Show or, or, or Baltimore some, Pen Show, we, DC. We would love to meet you. <laughs> Absolutely. On wow. that note, I'll go ahead and post our address in the description yes. down below. Please keep sending us mail. We would love to read it um, every episode. Sure. So we'll be here. Um, as always, keep writing. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and mm-hmm. turn your notification bell on so you're notified when we post a new video. Mm-hmm. And on that note, until Bye. next time. See you next time. Bye.